So a kick clip needs a flick. But why? I mean, it's only a matter of this amount of flick. But sometimes you can't simply flip it, no matter how hard you try it. You're watching Why the Trick, and today we're gonna study a trick scientifically. Have you ever had this experience that no matter how hard you try, your board simply doesn't flip? And what makes it even harder to understand is that you can flip your board with your finger with ease. I mean, think about it. Which one do you think is stronger between human legs and a finger? Obviously, legs, right? So if someone gives you an advice to flick harder, he or she might be inaccurate if not wrong. As a matter of fact, it doesn't require so much energy. Let's do a little math and estimate how much energy is needed to do this and this. So the amount of energy can be calculated like this. Weight times speed divided by the duration of the force. In this case, 3 kilograms times 0.1 meter per second divided by 0.1 second equals 3 kilograms. So that's the amount of energy that is needed to flick. Doesn't ring a bell? <laughs> it certainly doesn't ring my bell. So let's just compare it with something that generates so much more energy, like kicking a soccer ball. Studies say human legs account for 8 to 10 percent of body weight. So let's consider 5 kilograms per leg. And also, according to studies, an adult man on average can kick a soccer ball at 9 meters per second, divided by the duration of time 0.1 second on average, which makes it 450 kilograms. Yes, you see, right, it's 150 times stronger. I admit, the accuracy of this calculation is highly questionable, but the point is, human legs are strong enough to flick a skateboard. It's not about how hard you flick. If you think it's heavy when flicking a skateboard, something could be going wrong, because as a matter of fact, it doesn't require so much energy. So what, what could be going wrong with your flick? I mean, understanding the theory doesn't really help you solve these problems. Okay, allow me to show you one more concept in this video. When an object spins or flips, there is an axis in the middle of the object so that the object can rotate smoothly. There needs to be a clear axis in the middle, and the force of the spin cannot interfere with the axis. That can also be said in this case, and in this case. Notice the force of the spin is not interfering with the axis. An exact same thing can be said in kickflips. Try visualizing an axis in the middle of the skateboard. You can't? Don't worry, I got you covered. Try considering this blue line in the middle, an axis of the skateboard. And what would you do when you want to flip the object in the most effective manner without interfering with the axis? In other words, if you want to flip the object like this, you'd probably flip it this way. By giving the object force that goes at the right angle with the axis, it flips in the most effective manner. This can be said in kickflips too. Take a closer look at my front toe. It goes to the same direction as the blue ring goes. And this is where the concept kicks in. Number one, don't interfere with the axis. From this angle, it looks clearer. You can see how I am not touching the axis. And if you do, that's when it becomes heavy. Number two, flick around the axis. In other words, your toe should be going towards the same direction as the axis is, without touching it. To let it happen, it is essential to know where to stop flicking. In this case, notice I'm using my front knee as a pivot point, and I'm not extending my front foot too far. The reasons why I don't do that is because if you do, Number one, it generates too much unnecessary energy, far beyond 3 kilograms. Number two, correspondingly becomes harder to balance because of the unnecessary energy. And number three, your front foot will sink below your deck, making it impossible to land back on. So just try to avoid overflicking and let your ankle do the rest. Practice. I highly recommend you to practice flicking like this. Pop gently and get off your board to the heel side. Make sure to use your front knee as a pivot point and try to avoid overflicking. Why the trick functions? 
While practicing, you might want to see 3D models that you saw in this video. They are fully available on my website. Just go find Why the Trick and you can find those 3D models. They are fully interactive, you can adjust camera angle, play speed, transparency and everything. Go find and solve your whys. Okay, in summary, number one, flick quickly, not forcefully. It doesn't need so much energy. Number two, don't interfere with the axis. If you do, that's when it feels heavy. And number three, avoid overflicking. This is because if you flick your board unnecessarily strongly, not only do you lose your balance, you won't be able to land back on. And in the first place, it doesn't need so much energy. Unanswered questions. If you're watching this video so far, some of you might be thinking, a lot of people say you should not flick down. Isn't this flicking down? Or pros always say you should flick forward, not diagonally off to the side. How does it work? Or do I intentionally move my ankle? It's been much longer video than I thought it was going to be, so let's talk about those questions in the next videos. Please leave a comment, it is your why that grows this channel. It's been Why the Trick, until next time.